Thank you. And uh, uh, thank you, but let's minimize the applause. I only got a few, a little, few, time, uh, few minutes. <laughs> Uh, so the talks changed a little bit, bear with me also, and now I don't have my speaker notes either, so bear with me. So March 2017, two years ago, was the first and only so far CodePen meetup uh, that we held. Uh, a friend of mine hosted it alongside Chris Coyer of CSS Tricks, and everybody was presenting side projects, some really cool stuff. I was feeling the FOMO, I wanted to present, and I presented this, a jQuery-based table with rows that would open on hover. Not a revelation uh, at all, to be sure. And it's cringy to think about now, but that was my career back then. That was me as a developer. I was working on .NET Web Forms and jQuery. I was working on old uh, legacy code bases that didn't really come with a built-in path to modernization. Uh, ben Dalton from No Before mentioned this yesterday at his lightning talk. Um, we knew that we had to get with the times for performance, for speed, for usability's sake. Uh, so I put it on myself to go out there and research options, see what I could find in, in terms of a front-end framework that would help us with that. And I hit the framework fatigue wall pretty hard, pretty quick, because there were just so many options. And some were enormous ecosystems. Some had very little documentation or none at all. Um, I just, I couldn't really suss it all out. So for the time being, I put it down. And ultimately though, it was the front end Twitter community that convinced me to take another look at you. More specifically, the community and their compassion uh, as it was building up around Vue. That's what drove me to revisit it. So I started up fresh, empty cup from the docs uh, and eventually got a subscription to front end masters. Sarah Drasner's intro to Vue.js course was what really got the ball rolling for me. I really enjoyed just being, seeing everything, you know, being worked out live and being able to see, implement it immediately in little toy applications. Eventually, I was able to build an application for work, a uh, small little document suggestion app. It's probably gonna be my next cringe app. If everyone has one, I think that's gonna probably be my next one thinking about that code base. But it was really great to see it work and to see it ship. Uh, nowadays, I work with slightly more advanced stuff. I get to work with some Vue X, and I get to work with some Vue Router. Uh, and I, I still have weaknesses. I haven't taken Evan's talk, for example. Sorry, Evan. Um, but, you know, that's where I'm at now. <clears throat> Excuse me. And what led, to it, what led to that was this smooth on-ramp to getting to understand Vue. And it's been people like Sarah like Chris Fritz, people who've worked on the docs that have helped with that. In fact, can we please have a round of applause for everybody here or not who has worked on the documentation or content? Because it really has been them and others in the community who have helped with that, um, who've uh, submitted documentation and, and been able to help educate people. And they make that barrier to entry really, really, really low. Um, <clears throat> now, the thing with front-end frameworks in general uh, has been that they can bloat up. Uh, and we're very lucky as, as the Vue community to have a team that has been extremely, um, <clears throat> this is why I need my show notes, my presentation notes. Uh, we've been very lucky to have a, a team, core team and a community uh, that has allowed us to have a very smooth uh, barrier, a very easy barrier to entry and a very smooth ramping up. I have never had to, I've never felt like I had to learn everything in order to apply it. Um, with other frameworks, uh, you have, you know, uh, just like any other software, you have to grow and evolve and change in order to improve. And as, you know, a newer developer, as a more junior developer, when, we, when people like us see that, uh, at first, you know, it may seem like you know, it's pretty smooth, but it can transform to something a bit more like this. And that can come with all sorts of positive changes, new features, that can come with uh, more accessibility, it can come with uh, new conventions, new best practices, new patterns. Uh, and, but it, and, you know, ultimately, it does sort of increase the cognitive load. 
And then that also come with breaking changes. Uh, there have been slews of uh, breaking changes to many frameworks, and that can get really intimidating for somebody who's trying to understand and learn front-end frameworks. Um, <clears throat> as, uh, sorry. But we've been lucky as a, as a community, again, to have a team that is very mindful of this. Uh, and they've been very open about it. We've heard it in a number of talks uh, that they've been t discussing changes to, uh, to pieces of view and Vuex. Uh, Chris Fritz has been super helpful with a lot of the documentation, and he discussed it earlier this morning as well. Uh, and so, to get to the point, and this is probably cut my talk a bit short, I want to, I am very grateful for processes like the request for comments. Uh, it's basically our opportunity to get involved. Um, apologies. It allows us to comment and see a bit into the future, see what new pieces of view are going to change or are going to evolve, what might be added, and comment on them and discuss them. Uh, as a community, we've seen view grow, and we've helped view grow, and as a community, we need to help it grow into the future. So I am very, help I am very grateful that they've come up with a very mindful, very thoughtful path forward, completely transparent, all of the RFCs are open for comment, and it's up to us to give them the feedback that they need for that development. And there are a few, and there, I wanna just highlight a couple of ways that we can make that happen. Uh, so the main ways to contribute, the big one is substantial changes. So what does that mean? That means uh, changes, you know, new uh, surf API surface area, uh, or the removal of features that maybe aren't, uh, you know, are repetitive or aren't as necessary anymore uh, because of new updates to JavaScript. Uh, it could also be <clears throat> contributions to conventions that may have nothing to do with the code. Uh, and I think that's a big one, actually, because a lot of people may not necessarily want to get into the low-level, nitty-gritty base of the actual framework, and it, but they want to contribute so that is possibly a way that you can contribute through organizational changes or through semantical changes uh, if you believe that might provide clarity to view. Um, there's also ways to contribute to just the art, just by commenting on the PRs. Let them know what project workflows you're working with or what scales you're working with and how the potential proposals might affect those, uh, might affect that. Um, and then just Suggesting stuff for the RFC process itself. It's still in its infancy. The, R, the actual repo is only two months old, and there are only 15 unique people on there, but there are 400 stars. That feels, feels a little mismatched. So I think we, as a community, need to step up and get out there and contribute. So please, get out there and contribute if and when you can. Thank you. <laughs>